Section 3. The General Welfare. When our founders wrote in the Constitution that the federal government would promote the general welfare, they could not have fathomed a massive bureaucracy that would someday spend $3 trillion in a single year roughly the sum, combined, spent by the departments covered in this section in 2022. Approximately half of that colossal sum was spent by the Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, alone the belly of the massive behemoth that is the modern administrative state. HHS is home to Medicare and Medicaid, the principal drivers of our $31 trillion national debt. When Congress passed and President Lyndon B. Johnson signed into law these programs, they were set on autopilot with no plan for how to pay for them. The first year that Medicare spending was visible on the books was 1967. From that point on through 2020 according to the American Main Street Initiatives. Analysis of official federal tallies Medicare and Medicaid combined cost $17.8 trillion, while our combined federal deficits over that same span were $17.9 trillion. In essence, our deficit problem is a Medicare and Medicaid problem. HHS is also home to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, and the National Institutes of Health, NIH, the duo most responsible along with President Joe Biden for the irrational, destructive, un-American mask and vaccine mandates that were imposed upon an ostensibly free people during the COVID-19 pandemic. All along, it was clear from randomized controlled trials the gold standard of medical research that masks provide little to no benefit in preventing the spread of viruses and might even be counterproductive. Yet the CDC ignored these high-quality RCTs, cherry-picked from politically malleable observational studies, and declared that everyone except children and infants below the age of two should don masks. Under COVID, as former director of HHS's Office of Civil Rights Roger Severino writes in Chapter 14, the CDC exposed itself as perhaps the most incompetent and arrogant agency in the federal government. Nor is the CDC the only villain in this play. Severino writes of the National Institutes of Health, despite its popular image as a benign science agency, NIH was responsible for paying for research in aborted baby body parts, human-animal chimera experiments in which the genes of humans and animals are mixed, and gain-of-function viral research that may have been responsible for COVID-19. Severino writes that Anthony Fossey's division of the NIH the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases owns half the patent for the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine, and several NIH employees receive up to $150,000 annually from Moderna vaccine sales. That would be the same experimental mRNA vaccine that the CDC now wants to force on children, who are at little to no risk from COVID-19 but at great risk from public health officials. The incestuous relationship between the NIH, CDC, and vaccine makers with all of the conflict of interest it entails cannot be allowed to continue, and the revolving door between them must be locked. As Severino writes, funding for scientific research should not be controlled by a small group of highly paid and unaccountable insiders at the NIH, many of whom stay in power for decades. The NIH monopoly on directing research should be broken. What's more, NIH has long been at the forefront in pushing junk gender science. The next HHS secretary should immediately put an end to the department's foray into woke transgender activism. HHS also pushes abortion as a form of health care, skirting and sometimes blatantly defying the Hyde Amendment in the process. Severino writes that the FDA should reverse its approval of chemical abortion drugs because the politicized approval process was illegal from the start. In addition, HHS programs often violate the spirit, and sometimes the letter, of conscience protection laws. Severino writes that the HHS secretary should pursue a robust agenda to protect the fundamental right to life, protect conscience rights, and uphold bodily integrity rooted in biological realities, not ideology. The next secretary should also reverse the Biden administration's focus on LGBTQ and equity, subsidizing single motherhood, disincentivizing work, and penalizing marriage, replacing such policies with those encouraging marriage, work, motherhood, fatherhood, and nuclear families. If there is another department that has gone off the rails like HHS during the Obama and Biden administrations, it is the once proud Department of Justice, DOJ. As former counselor to the Attorney General Gene Hamilton writes in Chapter 17, the department has a long and noble history. Edmund Randolph, the first Attorney General, took office the same year as President Washington yet its long-standing reputation has been marred by the Biden administration's abuse of the department's powers for its own ends. Hamilton writes that the department's unprecedented politicization and weaponization under Biden and Attorney General Merrick Garland, resulting in politically motivated and viewpoint-based prosecutions of political enemies and indifference to the crimes of political allies, has made the department a threat to the republic. The most important thing for the next Attorney General to do is to refocus the department on its core functions of protecting public safety and defending the rule of law, while restoring its values of independence, impartiality, honesty, integrity, respect, and excellence. This is especially true of the Federal Bureau of Investigations, FBI. A bloated, arrogant, increasingly lawless organization, especially at the top, the FBI views itself as an independent agency that is on PAR with the Attorney General, rather than as an agency that is under the AG and fully accountable to him or her. 
terrain in this completely out of control bureau and reminded of its place within rather than at the top of the DOJ hierarchy, Hamilton writes that the FBI's separate office of general counsel, with approximately 300 attorneys, separate office of legislative affairs, and separate office of public affairs should all be abolished. Requiring the FBI to get its legal advice from the wider department would serve as a crucial check on an agency that has recently pushed past legal boundary after legal boundary. Indeed, Hamilton writes, T. He next conservative administration should eliminate any offices within the FBI that it has the power to eliminate without any action from Congress. Elsewhere, DOJ should target violent and career criminals, not parents, work to dismantle criminal organizations, partly by rigorously prosecuting interstate drug activity, and restart the Trump administration's China initiative, to address Chinese espionage and theft of trade secrets, which the Biden administration terminated. Largely out of a concern for poor optics. It should also enforce existing federal law that prohibits mailing abortifacients, rather than harassing pro-life demonstrators, respect the constitutional guarantee of the freedom of speech, rather than trying to police speech on the Internet, and enforce federal immigration laws, rather than pretending there is no border. In contrast to DOJ's long history, the Department of Education, the Department or Ed, discussed by Lindsay Burke in Chapter 11, is a creation of the Jimmy Carter administration. The Department is a convenient one-stop shop for the woke education cartel, which as the COVID era showed is not particularly concerned with children's education. Schools should be responsive to parents, rather than to leftist advocates' intent on indoctrination and the more the federal government is involved in education, the less responsive to parents the public schools will be. This department is an example of federal intrusion into a traditionally state and local realm. For the sake of American children, Congress should shutter it and return control of education to the states. Short of this, the Secretary of Education should insist that the department serve parents and American ideals, not advocates whose message is that children can choose their own sex, that America is systemically racist that math itself is racist, and that Martin Luther King, Jr.'s ideal of a colorblind society should be rejected in favor of reinstating a color-conscious society. The next head of this department will have a lot to do hopefully culminating in the department's closure and the salutary restoration of educational control to states, localities, and parents. The next Secretary of Energy will similarly have much work to do. Under the next president, the Department of Energy should end the Biden administration's unprovoked war on fossil fuels, restore America's energy independence oppose eyesore windmills built at taxpayer expense, and respect the right of Americans to buy and drive cars of their own choosing, rather than trying to force them into electric vehicles and eventually out of the driver's seat altogether in favor of self-driving robots. As former Commissioner of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission Bernard L. McNamee says in Chapter 12, a conservative president must be committed to unleashing all of America's energy resources and making the energy economy serve the American people, not special interests. In Chapter 10, Darren Baxt writes that the Biden administration's Department of Agriculture claims to be transforming the food system as we know it. But the government does not need to transform the food system, instead, it should respect American farmers, truckers, and families. In Chapter 13, former Chief of Staff at the Environmental Protection Agency Mandy Gunascara writes that the EPA's current activities and staffing levels far exceed its congressional mandates and purpose, whereas its initial success in its infancy, in the 1970s, was a product of clear mandates, a streamlined structure, and recognition of the state's prominent role. Having since become a coercive agency, full of embedded activists, its structure and mission should be greatly circumscribed. Former Secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development Dr. Benjamin S. Carson writes in Chapter 15 that HUD is beset with mission creep and regularly crosses the line into exercising quasi-legislative powers. In the next administration, it should refocus on its core duties and keep non-citizens, from living in federally assisted housing, provide enhanced oversight of foreign ownership of U.S. real estate, and reinvigorate paths to upward economic mobility and economic self-sufficiency. In Chapter 18, former Acting Assistant Secretary of Policy at the Department of Labor Jonathan Berry writes that the department and related agencies should pursue pro-family, pro-worker policies to help restore the family supporting job as the centerpiece of the American economy, in lieu of the current administration's left-wing social engineering agenda the most assertive in history which empowers race, gender, and climate change activists at the expense of American workers. In Chapter 19, on the Department of Transportation, dot, Former Deputy Assistant Director for Research and Technology Diana Furcht Gottroth writes, In pursuit of an anti-fossil fuel climate agenda never approved by Congress, the Biden administration has raised fuel economy requirements to levels that cannot realistically be met by most gas-powered cars, thereby reducing Americans' freedom while increasing costs. Lastly, former Acting Chief of Staff at the Department of Veterans Affairs Brooks D. Tucker, echoing concerns expressed in other chapters, writes in Chapter 20 that the Veterans Affairs, VA, must be accountable to the needs and problems of veterans not subservient to the parochial preferences of the bureaucracy. Warning, empty page. 10. Department of Agriculture. Darren Baxt.
American farmers efficiently and safely produce food to meet the needs of individuals around the globe. Because of the innovation and resilience of the nation's farmers, American agriculture is a model for the world. If farmers are allowed to operate without unnecessary government intervention, American agriculture will continue to flourish, producing plentiful, safe, nutritious, and affordable food. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA, can and should play a limited role, with much of its focus on removing governmental barriers that hinder food production or otherwise undermine efforts to meet consumer demand. The USDA should recognize what should be self-evident, agricultural production should first and foremost be focused on efficiently producing safe food. This chapter provides important background on the USDA and identifies many of the USDA-specific issues that will be faced by an incoming administration. It provides specific recommendations for the next administration about how to address these issues and lays out a conservative vision for what the USDA should look like in the future. Mission Statement the current mission statement as stated by the Biden administration highlights the broad scope of the USDA. To serve all Americans by providing effective, innovative, science-based public policy leadership in agriculture, food and nutrition, natural resource, protection and management, rural development and related issues with a commitment to delivering equitable and climate smart opportunities that inspire and help America thrive. Point one. The first part of the mission statement regarding the issues covered is not new to the Biden administration, it reflects the overly broad nature of the USDA's work. However, the language bringing in equity and climate change is new to the Biden administration and part of the USDA's express effort to transform agricultural production. Point two. The USDA's new vision statement illuminates the focus of this effort. An equitable and climate smart food and agriculture economy that protects and improves the health, nutrition, and quality of life of all Americans, yields healthy land, forests, and clean water, helps rural America thrive, and feeds the world. Point three. This effort is one of a federal central plan to put climate change and environmental issues ahead of the most important requirements of agriculture to efficiently produce safe food. The USDA would apparently use its power to change the very nature of the food and agriculture economy into one that is equitable and climate smart. As an initial matter, the USDA should not try to control and shape the economy, but should instead remove obstacles that hinder food production. Further, it should not place ancillary issues, such as environmental issues, ahead of agricultural production itself. A proper mission statement. Even before the Biden administration's radical Effort to reshape the USDA's work, the USDA's mission was and is too broad, including serving as a major welfare agency through implementation of programs such as food stamps. This far-reaching mission is not the fault of the USDA, but of Congress, which has given the department its extensive power. Congress must limit the USDA's role. A proper mission would clarify that the department's primary focus is on agriculture and that the USDA serves all Americans. The USDA's client is the American people in general, not a subset of interests, such as farmers, meat packers, environmental groups, etc. Within this agricultural focus, the USDA should develop and disseminate information and research, the historical role of the USDA, identify and address concrete threats to public health and safety arising directly from food and agriculture. Remove unjustified foreign trade barriers blocking market access for American agricultural goods, and generally remove government barriers that undermine access to safe and affordable food across the food supply chain. Core principles should be included within any mission statement, including a recognition that farmers, and the food system in general, should be free from unnecessary government intervention. Further, there should be clear statements about the importance of sound science to inform the USDA's work and respect for personal freedom and individual dietary choices, private property rights, and the rule of law. Taking these factors into account, below is a model USDA mission statement. To develop and disseminate agricultural information and research, identify and address concrete public health and safety threats directly connected to food and agriculture, and remove both unjustified foreign trade barriers for U.S. goods and domestic government barriers that undermine access to safe and affordable food absent a compelling need all based on the importance of sound science, personal freedom, private property, the rule of law, and service to all Americans. Overview In 1862, President Abraham Lincoln signed into law the legislation that created the USDA.4 The department had a very narrow mission focused on the dissemination of information connected to agriculture and to procure, propagate and distribute among the people new valuable seeds and plants. 5. During the last 160 years, the scope of the USDA's work has expanded well beyond that narrow mission and well beyond agriculture itself. In addition to being a distributor of farm subsidies, the USDA runs the food stamp program and other food-related welfare programs and covers issues including conservation, biofuels, forestry and rural programs. Based on the USDA's fiscal year, FI, 2023 budget summary, outlays are estimated at $261 billion, $221 billion for mandatory programs and $39 billion for discretionary programs. Point six. These outlays are broken down as follows, nutrition assistance, 
farm, conservation, and commodity programs, 14%, all other, which includes rural development, research, food safety, marketing, and regulatory, and departmental management, 11%, and forestry, 5%, 0.7. The USDA has provided a summary of its size, explaining, today, USDA is comprised of 29 agencies organized under eight mission areas and 16 staff offices, with nearly 100,000 employees serving the American people at more than 6,000 locations across the country and abroad. 8. Major Priority Issues and Specific Recommendations For an incoming administration, there are numerous issues that should be addressed at the USDA. This chapter identifies and discusses many of the most important issues. The initial issues discussed should be priority issues for the next administration. Defend American Agriculture it is deeply unfortunate that the first issue identified must be a willingness of the incoming administration to defend American agriculture, but this is precisely what the top priority for that administration should be. As previously discussed, the Biden administration is seeking to use the federal government to transform the American food system. Point nine. The USDA website explains. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA, alongside Biden-Harris administration leadership and the people of this great country, has embarked on another historic journey transforming the food system as we know it from farm to fork, and at every stage along the supply chain. Point 10. The federal government does not need to transform the food system or develop a national plan to intervene across the supply chain. Instead, it should respect American farmers, truckers, and everyone who makes the food supply chain so resilient and successful. One of the important lessons learned during the COVID-19 pandemic was how critical it is to remove barriers in the food supply chain not to increase them. The Biden administration's centrally planned transformational effort minimizes the importance of efficient agricultural production and instead places issues such as climate change and equity front and center. The USDA's Strategic Plan Fiscal Years 2022-2026 identifies six strategic goals, the first three of which focus on issues such as climate change, renewable energy, and systemic racism. In the Secretary of Agriculture's message, there is only one mention of affordable food and nothing about efficient production and the incredible innovation and respect for the environment that already exists within the agricultural community. Point 11. The Biden administration's USDA strongly supported 12 the recent United Nations, UN, Food Systems Summit. According to the USDA, the stated goal of the Food Systems Summit was to transform the way the world produces, consumes, and thinks about foods within the context of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and to meet the challenges of poverty, food security, malnutrition, population growth, climate change, and natural resource degradation. Point 13. Not unlike those who oppose reliable and affordable energy production, there is a disdain especially by some on the left, for American agriculture and the food system. Point 14 The Biden administration's vision of a federal government developing a plan that fixes agriculture and focuses on issues secondary to food production is very disturbing. A recent USDA-created program captures both the disrespect for American farmers and the Biden administration's effort to dictate agricultural practices. The USDA explained that it was concerned with farmers not transitioning to organic farming, and therefore announced that it will dedicate $300 million to Induce farmers to adopt organic farming. Point 15 There was no recognition that farmers know how to farm better than D.C. politicians 16 or that organic food is expensive 17 and land intensive. Point 18 The Biden administration has also been pushing so called climate smart 19 agricultural practices which received additional support in the Partisan Inflation Reduction Act. Point 20 American agriculture should not need defending. According to the USDA's latest data, farm output nearly tripled, a 175% increase, from 1948 to 2019 while the amount of land farmed decreased. In fact, as farm output increased by 175%, all agricultural inputs increased by only 4%.21. In 2021, despite high food prices a major problem and regressive American, consumers spent an average of about 10% of their personal disposable income on food, which is close to historic lows. For decades, this share has been in decline. 22 America's farmers efficiently produce food using fewer resources, making it possible for food to be affordable. This reality is not only something that should be defended but also touted as a prime example of what makes American agriculture so successful. The connection between efficiency and affordability seems lost in the Biden administration's effort to transform the food system. Recommendations Proactively defend agriculture. From the outset, the next administration should denounce efforts to place ancillary issues like climate change ahead of food productivity and affordability when it comes to agriculture. L. Remove the U.S. from any association with U.N. and other efforts to push sustainable development schemes connected to food production. L. Defend American agriculture and advance the critical importance of efficient and innovative food production, especially to advance safe and affordable food. L. Stress that ideal policy should remove obstacles imposed on American farmers and individuals across the food supply chain so that they can meet the food needs of Americans. L. Clarify the critical importance of efficiency to food affordability, 
and why a failure to recognize this fact especially hurts low-income households who spend a disproportionate share of after-tax income on food compared to higher-income households. Point 23. To accomplish these objectives, a new administration should announce its principles through an executive order, the USDA should remove all references to transforming the food system on its website and other department disseminated material, and it should expressly and regularly communicate the principles informing the objectives listed above, as well as promote these principles through legislative efforts. The USDA should also carefully review existing efforts that involve inappropriately imposing its preferred agricultural practices onto farmers. Address the abuse of CCC discretionary authority. With the exception of federal crop insurance, the Commodity Credit Corporation, CCC, is generally the means by which agricultural-related farm bill programs are funded. The CCC is a funding mechanism, which, in simple terms, has $30 billion a year at its disposal. Point 24. Section 5 of the Commodity Credit Corporation Charter Act, Charter Act, 25 gives the Secretary of Agriculture broad discretionary authority to spend unused CCC money. However, in general, past agriculture secretaries have not used this power to any meaningful extent. This changed dramatically during the Trump administration, when this discretionary authority was used to fund $28 billion in trade aid to farmers, consisting primarily of the Market Facilitation Program. In 2020, this authority was used for $20.5 billion in food purchases and income subsidies in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. 26. At the time, critics warned that this use of the CCC, which in effect created a USDA slush fund, would lead future administrations to abuse the CCC, such as by pushing climate change policies. 27. Predictably, this is precisely what the Biden administration has done, using the discretionary authority to create programs out of whole cloth arguably without statutory authority 28 for what it refers to as climate smart agricultural practices point 29 the merits of the various programs funded through the ccc discretionary authority is not the focus of this discussion the major problem is that the secretary of agriculture is empowered to use a slush fund billions of dollars are being used for programs that congress never envisioned or intended concern about this type of abuse is not new in fact from 2012 to 2017 Congress expressly limited the Agriculture Secretary's discretionary spending authority under the Charter Act. 30 and this was before the recent massive discretionary CCC spending occurred. The use of the discretionary power is a separation of powers problem, with Congress abrogating its spending power. This power is ripe for abuse as could be expected with any slush fund and it is a possible way to get around the farm bill process to achieve policy goals not secured during the legislative process. The next administration should L. Refrain from using Section 5 discretionary authority. The USDA can address this abuse on its own by following the lead of most administrations and not using this discretionary authority. L. Promote legislative fixes to address abuse. Ideally, Congress would repeal the Secretary's discretionary authority under Section 5 of the Charter Act. There is no reason to maintain such authority. If Congress needs to spend money to assist farmers, it has legislative tools, including the Farm Bill and the annual appropriations process, to do so in a timely fashion. While not an ideal solution, Congress could also amend the Charter Act to require prior congressional approval through duly enacted legislation before any money is spent. At a minimum, Congress should amend the Charter Act to L. Limit spending to directly help farmers and ranchers address issues due to unforeseen events not already covered by existing programs and that constitute genuine emergencies that must be addressed immediately. L. Prohibit the CCC from being used to assist parties beyond farmers and ranchers. L. Clarify that spending is only to address problems that are temporary in nature and ensure that funding is targeted to address such problems. L. Tighten the discretion within Section 5 and identify ways for improper application of the Charter Act to be challenged in court. Reform farm subsidies. Too often, agricultural policy becomes synonymous with farm subsidy policy. This is unfortunate, because making them synonymous fails to recognize that agricultural policy covers a wide range of issues, including issues that are outside the proper scope of the USDA, such as environmental regulation. However, there is no question that farm subsidies are an important issue within agricultural policy that should be addressed by any incoming administration. There are several principles that even subsidy supporters would likely agree upon, including the need to reduce market distortions. Subsidies should not influence planting decisions, discourage proper risk management and innovation, incentivize planting on environmentally sensitive land, or create barriers to entry for new farmers. Farm subsidies can lead to these market distortions and therefore it would hardly be controversial to ensure that any subsidy scheme should be designed to avoid such problems. The overall goal should be to eliminate subsidy dependence. Despite what might be conventional wisdom, many farmers receive few to no subsidies 31 with most subsidies going to only a handful of commodities. According to the Congressional Research Service, CRS, from 2014 to 2016, 94% of farm program 
support went to just six commodities corn, cotton, peanuts, rice, soybeans and wheat that together account for only 28% of farm receipts.32 Although many farmers do not receive much in the way of subsidies, especially those in the areas of livestock and specialty crops, fruit, vegetable and nuts, 33 there are still a significant number of farmers growing row crops like corn and cotton that do receive significant farm subsidies. The primary subsidy programs include the Agriculture Risk Coverage, ARC, Program 34 the Price Loss Coverage, PLC, Program 35 and the Federal Crop Insurance. Program.36 Farmers can participate on a crop-by-crop -crop basis in the ARC program or the PLC program. These programs cover about 20 different crops.37 The ARC program protects farmers from what are referred to as shallow losses, providing Payments when their actual revenues fall below 86% of the expected revenues for their crops.38 The PLC program provides payments to farmers when commodity prices fall below a fixed, statutorily established reference price.39. The federal crop insurance program is broader in scope than ARC and PLC, and in crop year 2019 covered 124 commodities.40 Farmers pay a portion of a premium to participate in the program. Taxpayers on average pay about 60% 41. Of the premium. As explained by CRS. Revenue protection was the most frequently purchased policy type in 2019, accounting for almost 70% of policies purchased 42. While there are certainly other subsidy programs besides ARC, PLC and Federal Crop Insurance, one program that deserves special mention is the Federal Sugar Program. This program, unlike most other subsidy programs, intentionally tries to restrict supply 43 and thereby drives up prices. The program costs consumers as much as $3.7 billion a year.44. When it comes to reforming subsidy programs, the next administration will primarily have to look to legislative solutions. The next administration should champion legislation that would L. Repeal the federal sugar program. The federal government should not be in the central planning business, and the sugar program is a prime example of harmful central planning. Its very purpose is to limit the sugar supply in order to increase prices. The program has a regressive effect since lower income households spend more of their money to meet food needs compared to higher income households. Point 45. L. Ideally, repeal the ARC and PLC programs. Farmers eligible to participate in ARC or PLC are generally already able to purchase federal crop insurance, policies that protect against shortfalls in expected revenue whether caused by lower prices or smaller harvests. The ARC program is especially egregious because farmers are being protected from shallow losses, which is another way of saying minor DIPs in expected revenue. This is hardly consistent with the concept of providing a safety net to help farmers when they fall on hard times. The Congressional Budget Office CBO, in one of its options to reduce the federal deficit, has once again identified repealing all Title I farm programs, including ARC, PLC, and the Federal Sugar Program. 46. L. Stop paying farmers twice for price and revenue losses during the same year. Farmers can receive support from the ARC or PLC programs and the Federal Crop Insurance Program to cover price declines and revenue shortfalls during the same year. Congress should prohibit this duplication by prohibiting farmers from receiving an ARC or PLC payment the same year they receive a crop insurance indemnity. L. Reduce the premium subsidy rate for crop insurance. On average, taxpayers cover about 60% 47 of the premium cost for policies purchased in the federal crop insurance program. One of the most widely supported and bipartisan policy reforms is to reduce the premium subsidy that taxpayers are forced to pay. 48 at a minimum, taxpayers should not pay more than 50% of the premium. After all, taxpayers should not have to pay more than the farmers who benefit from the crop insurance policies. CBO has found that reducing the premium subsidy to 47% would save $8.1 billion over 10 years and have little impact on crop insurance participation or on the number of covered acres.49 In that analysis, there would be a reduction in insured acres of just one half of 1%, and only 1.5% of acres would have lower coverage levels. 50 This reform is basically all benefit with little to no cost. In its recently released report identifying options to reduce the federal deficit, CBO found that reducing the premium subsidy to 40% would save $20.9 billion over 10 years.51. Beyond these legislative reforms, the next administration should L. Communicate to Congress the necessity of transparency in a genuine reform process. The White House and the USDA should make it very clear that the farm bill process, including reform of farm subsidies, must be conducted through an open process with time for markup and the opportunity for changes to be made outside the Agriculture Committee process. The farm bill too often is developed behind closed doors and without any chance for real reform. The White House, given the power of the bully pulpit, must demand a genuine reform process and express unwavering support for a USDA that shapes a safety net that considers the interests of farmers, while also remembering the interests of taxpayers and consumers. Any safety net for farmers should be a true safety net one that helps farmers when they have experienced serious unforeseen losses, preferably when there has been a disaster or unforeseen natural event causing damage, 
and that exists to help them in unusual situations. L. Separate the agricultural provisions of the farm bill from the nutrition provisions. To have genuine reform and proper consideration of the issues, agricultural programs should be considered in separate legislation distinct from food stamps and the nutrition part of the farm bill, and reauthorization of such programs should be fixed on different timelines to ensure this separation. Agricultural and nutritional programs, which are distinct from each other, have been combined together for political reasons, something which is readily admitted by proponents of this log rolling. When it comes to American agriculture and welfare programs, they deserve sound policy debates, not political tactics at the expense of thoughtful discourse. Move the work of the Food and Nutrition Service. The USDA implements many means-tested federal support programs, including the largest food assistance program, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, also known as Food Stamps, and the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, WIC, Food Program. The Food and Nutrition Service, FNS, oversees these programs and other food and nutrition programs, including the Center for Nutrition Policy and Promotion 52 which handles the USDA's work on the Dietary Guidelines for Americans, Dietary Guidelines, Point 53 Food Nutrition Programs include, SNAP, WIC, the National School Lunch Program, NSLP, the School Breakfast Program, SBP, the Child and Adult Care Food Program, the Nutrition Program for the Elderly, Nutrition Service Incentives, the Summer Food Service Program, the Commodity Supplemental Food Program, the Temporary Emergency Food Program, the Farmers Market Nutrition Program, and the Special Milk Program. The next administration should L. Move the USDA Food and Nutrition Programs to the Department of Health and Human Services. There are more than 89 current means-tested welfare programs, and total means-tested spending has been estimated to surpass $1.2 trillion between federal and state resources. Point 54 Because means-tested federal programs are siloed and administered in separate agencies, the effectiveness and size of the welfare state remains largely hidden. There are means-tested food support programs in the USDA, especially FNS, whereas most means-tested programs are at the Department of Health and Human Services, HHS. All means-tested anti-poverty programs should be overseen by one department specifically HHS, which handles most welfare programs. Reform SNAP Ostensibly, SNAP sends money through electronic benefit. Transfer, EBT, cards to help low-income individuals buy food. It is the largest of the federal nutrition programs. Food stamps are designed to be supplemented by other forms of income whether through paid employment or non-profit support. SNAP serves 41.1 million individuals an increase of 4.3 million people during the bidden years. 55 in 2020, the food stamp program cost $79.1 billion. That number continued to rise by 2022, outlays hit $119.50 billion. 56. The next administration should L. Re-implement work requirements. The statutory language covering food stamps allows states to waive work requirements that otherwise apply to work-capable individuals that is, adult beneficiaries between the ages 18 and 50 who are not disabled and do not have any children or other dependents in the home. Point 57. Even in a strong economy, work expectations are fairly limited, individuals who are work capable and without dependents are required to work or prepare for work for 20 hours per week. Point 58. The work requirements are then implemented unless the state requests a waiver from the USDA's Food and Nutrition Services. Point 59. Waivers from statutory work requirements can be approved in two instances, an unemployment rate of more than 10% or a lack of sufficient jobs. Point 60. The Trump administration bolstered USDA work expectations in the food stamp program. In February 2019, FNS issued a modest regulatory change that applied only to able-bodied individuals without dependents beneficiaries aged 18 to 49, not elderly or disabled, who did not have children or other dependents in the home, ABOD. Point 61 The FNS rule changed when a state could receive a waiver from implementing the ABOD work requirement. Under the new rule, in order to waive the work requirement, the state's unemployment rate had to be above 6% for more than 24 months. The rule also defined area in such a way that states would be unable to combine non-contiguous counties in order to maximize their waivers. Point 62 of the more than 40 million food stamp beneficiaries, the Trump rule would have applied only to 688,000 individuals in fiscal year 2021.63. The Trump reform was scheduled to go into effect, but a D.C. District Court federal judge enjoined the rule. Point 64 The USDA filed an appeal in late December 2020,65 but the Biden administration withdrew from defending the challenge and the rule was never implemented. Point 66. Beyond the able-bodied work requirement, FNS should implement better regulation to clarify options for states to implement the general work requirement. This requirement is an option states can apply to work-capable beneficiaries aged 16 to 59. If beneficiaries' work hours are below 30 hours a week, 
states can implement the general work requirements to oblige beneficiaries to register for work or participate in SNAP employment and training or work fair assigned by the state SNAP agency. Point 67 Increased clarity for states would include items like states being required to offer employment and training spots for those that request them not simply budgeting for every currently enrolled able-bodied adult. L Reform Broad-Based Categorical Eligibility Federal law permits states to enroll individuals in food stamps if they receive a benefit from another program, such as the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, TANF, program. However, under an administrative option in TANF called Broad-Based Categorical Eligibility, BBC, benefit is defined so broadly that it includes simply receiving distributed pamphlets and 1-800 numbers.68 This definition, with its low threshold to trigger a benefit, allows individuals to bypass eligibility limits particularly the asset requirement, how much the applicant has in resources such as bank accounts or property, Point 69 adopting the BBCE option has even allowed millionaires to enroll. In the food stamp program Point 70. The Trump administration proposed to close the loophole with a rule to increase program integrity and reduce fraud, waste, and abuse. 71 The regulation was not finalized before the end of the Trump administration. L. Reevaluate the thrifty food plan. In a dramatic overreach, the Biden administration unilaterally increased food stamp benefits by at least 23% in October 2021.72 through an update to the Thrifty Food Plan, in which the USDA analyzes a basket of foods intended to provide a nutritious diet, the USDA increased food stamp outlays by between $250 billion and $300 billion over 10 years.73. Although the 2018 Farm Bill instructed FNS to update the Thrifty Food Plan by 2023 and every five years thereafter, every previous Thrifty Food Plan has been always cost-neutral just an inflation update, exactly what CBO estimated as cost of the 2018 Farm Bill.74. The Biden administration may have skirted regulations and congressional authority to increase the overall cost of the program. In fact, Senate and House Republicans requested that the Government Accountability Office investigate the legal authorities and process that the USDA undertook to arrive at such an unprecedented increase.75. L. Eliminate the heat and eat loophole. States can artificially boost a household's food stamp benefit by using the heat and eat loophole. The amount of food stamps a household receives is based on its countable income, income minus certain deductions. Households that receive benefits from the low-income heat and energy assistance program, LIHEAP, are eligible for a larger utility deduction. In order to make households eligible for the higher deduction, and thus for greater food stamp benefits, states have distributed LIHEAP checks for amounts as small as $1 to food stamp recipients. The 2014 Farm Bill tightened this loophole by requiring that a household must receive more than $20 annually in LIHEAP payments to be eligible for the larger utility deduction and subsequently higher food stamp benefits. Point 76 Nonetheless, states continue to inflate their standard utility allowances. Under the Trump administration, the USDA proposed a rule, which was not finalized, that would have standardized the utility allowance. Point 77. Reform WIC. Turning to WIC, this program distributes money through EBT cards to help low-income women, infants, and children under 6 purchase nutrition. Rich foods and nutrition education, including breastfeeding support. As of August 2022, approximately 6.3 million people participated in WIC each month to purchase food. Point 78 in 2021, WIC federal outlays were $5 billion.79. The next administration should L. Reform the state voucher system. State agencies control WIC costs by approving only one brand of infant formula through competitive bidding for infant formula rebate contracts. Because 50% of baby formula is purchased through the federal WIC program, it is vital that regulation for these competitive bidding contracts does not unintentionally create monopolies. L. Reevaluate excessive regulation. As for baby formula regulations generally, labeling regulations and regulations that unnecessarily delay the manufacture and sale of baby formula should be reevaluated. Point 80 during the Biden administration there have been devastating baby formula shortages. Return to the original purpose of school meals. Federal meal programs for K-12 students were created to provide food to children from low-income families while at school.81 today, however, federal school meals increasingly resemble entitlement. Programs that have strayed far from their original objective and represent an example of the ever-expanding federal footprint in local school operations. The NSLP and SBP are the two largest K-12 meal programs provided by federal taxpayer money. The NSLP launched in 1946 and the SBP in 1966, both as options specifically for children in poverty. Point 82 During the COVID-19 pandemic, federal policymakers temporarily expanded access to school meal programs, but some lawmakers and federal officials have now proposed making this expansion permanent. 83 Yet even before the pandemic, research found that federal officials had already expanded these programs to serve children from upper-income homes, and these programs are rife with improper payments and inefficiencies. Heritage Foundation research from 2019 found that after the enactment of the Community Eligibility Provision, SEP, in 2010, 
the share of students from middle and upper income homes receiving free meals in states that participated in SEP doubled, and in some cases tripled all in a program meant for children from families with incomes at or below 185% of the federal poverty line, children from homes at or below 130% of the federal poverty line are eligible for free lunches, while students from families at or below 185% of poverty are eligible for reduced priced lunches, point 84. Under SEP, if 40% of students in a school or school district are eligible for federal meals, all students in that school or district can receive free meals. However, the USDA has taken it even further, improperly interpreting the LAWA5 to allow a subset of schools within a district to be grouped together to reach the 40% threshold, as a result, a school with zero low-income students could be grouped together with schools with high levels of low-income students, and as a result all the students in the schools within that group, even schools without a single low-income student can receive free federal meals. Point 86 schools can direct resources meant for students in poverty to children from wealthier families. Furthermore, the NSLP and SBP are among the most inaccurate federal programs according to PaymentAccuracy.gov, a project of the U.S. Office of Management and Budget and the Office of the Inspector General. Point 87 Before federal auditors reduced the rigor of annual reporting requirements in 2018, the NSLP had wasted nearly $2 billion in taxpayer resources through payments provided to ineligible recipients. Point 88 Even after the auditing changes, which the U.S. Government Accountability Office said results in the USDA not regularly assessing the program's fraud risks, the NSLP wasted nearly $500 million in FI 2021.89 The SBP now wastes nearly $200 million annually.90. Despite the ongoing effort to expand school meals under SEP and the evidence of waste and inefficiency, left-of-center members of Congress and President Biden's administration have nonetheless proposed further expansions to extend federal school meals to include every K-12 student regardless of need.91 The administration Recently proposed expanding federal school meal programs offered during the school year to be offered during the summer as part of the American Families Plan, and also proposed expanding SEP. Other federal officials, including Senator Bernie Sanders, IVT, have, in recent years, proposed expanding the NSLP to all students. 92. To serve students in need and prevent the misuse of taxpayer money, the next administration should focus on students in need and reject efforts to transform federal school meals into an entitlement program. Specifically, the next administration should L. Promulgate a rule properly interpreting SEP. The USDA should issue a rule that clarifies that only an individual school or a school district as a whole, not a subset of schools within a district, must meet the 40% criteria to be eligible for SEP. Education officials should be prohibited from grouping schools together. L. Work with lawmakers to eliminate SEP. The NSLP and SBP should be directed to serve children in need, not become an entitlement for students from middle and upper income homes. Congress should eliminate SEP. Further, the USDA should not provide meals to students during the summer unless students are taking summer school classes. Currently, students can get meals from schools even if they are not in summer school, which has, in effect, turned school meals into a federal catering program. Point 93. L. Restore programs to their original intent and reject efforts to create universal free school meals. The USDA should work with lawmakers to restore NSLP and SBP to their original goal of providing food to K-12 students who otherwise would not have food to eat while at school. Federal school meals should be focused on children in need, and any efforts to expand student eligibility for federal school meals to include all K-12 students should be soundly rejected. Such expansion would allow an inefficient, wasteful program to grow, magnifying the amount of wasted taxpayer resources. Reform conservation programs. Farmers, in general, are excellent stewards of the land, if not for moral or ethical considerations, then out of self-interest to make sure their land and by extension, their livelihoods remain intact. Farmers are often called the original conservationists. 94. When evaluating federal conservation programs, it is important to remember the importance of the land to farmers. In terms of USDA federal conservation programs, both the USDA's Farm Service Agency, FSA, and Natural Resources Conservation Service, NRCS, oversee numerous programs. 95. As a general matter, the next administration should ensure that these programs address genuine and specific environmental concerns with a focus on currently existing environmental problems not those that are speculative in nature. These conservation programs should have clearly identifiable goals, with the success or failure of these programs being directly measurable. Any assistance to farmers to take specific actions should not be provided unless the assistance will directly and clearly help to address a specific environmental problem. Further, any assistance to encourage farmers to engage in certain practices should only be provided if farmers would not have adopted the practices in the first place. There are specific issues that the next administration should address. The Conservation Reserve Program 96 which is run by FSA, pays farmers to not farm some of their land. This program has recently received attention, as agricultural groups rightfully seek to farm without penalty voluntarily idled land, 
in light of the consequences to food prices of Russia invading Ukraine. Point 97. There is also a need to reform USDA's conservation easements. These easements are a powerful tool to incentivize long-term preservation of ecosystems while still allowing farmers to benefit economically. However, when farmers and ranchers sign conservation easements with the USDA, they can be enforced in perpetuity. Future generations, be they the descendants of the landowner or new residents, are bound by those conditions. Ecosystems and topography naturally change over time, but without legislative change, easement requirements will not. The next administration should L. Champion the elimination of the Conservation Reserve Program. Farmers should not be paid in such a sweeping way not to farm their land. If there is a desire to ensure that extremely sensitive land is not farmed, this should be addressed through targeted efforts that are clearly connected to addressing a specific and concrete environmental harm. The USDA should work with Congress to eliminate this overbroad program. L. Reform NRCS Wetlands and Erodible Land Compliance and Appeals Problematic NRCS overreach could be avoided entirely by removing its authority to prescribe specific practices on a particular farm operation in order to ensure continued eligibility to participate in USDA farm programs. And to require instead that each farm, as a function of eligibility, must have created a general best practices plan. Such a plan could be approved by the local County Soil and Water Conservation District, SWCD. The local SWCD commissioners are elected by their peers in each respective county and are better suited than the NRCS to provide guidance for farm operations in their respective jurisdictions. At a minimum, a new administration should support legislation to divest more power to the states, and possibly local SWCDs, regarding erodible land and wetlands conservation. Point 98. L. Reform easements. The new administration should, to the extent authorized by law, limit the use of permanent easements and collaborate with lawmakers to prohibit the USDA from creating new permanent easements. Point 99. Other major issues and specific recommendations. Although the following issues have not been listed as priority, these issues are still extremely important, and the next administration should address them. Only meat and poultry from federally inspected facilities can be sold in interstate. Commerce point 100 Even meat and poultry from USDA-approved state inspected facilities may only be sold in intrastate commerce, with limited exceptions. Point 101 This is despite the fact that states with USDA-approved inspection programs must meet and enforce requirements that are at least equal to those imposed under the Federal Meat and Poultry Products Inspection Acts and the Humane Methods of Slaughter Act of 1978.102 This is an unnecessary regulatory barrier that makes it difficult to get meat and poultry into interstate commerce to create more options for consumers and farmers. Legislation entitled The New Markets for State Inspected Meat and Poultry Act of 2021 would help to remove this obstacle. Point 103. The next administration should L. Promote legislation that would allow state inspected meat to be sold in interstate commerce. These barriers to the sale of meat and poultry from USDA approved state inspected facilities should be removed. Eliminate or reform marketing orders and checkoff programs. Marketing orders and checkoff programs for agricultural commodities are similar in many ways. They both allow private actors within an industry to collaborate with the federal government to compel other competitors within an industry to fund the respective marketing order or checkoff program. There are currently 22 checkoff programs 104 and they focus on research and promotion of commodities such as beef and eggs. Marketing orders cover research and promotion, but also cover issues such as quality regulations and volume controls. The latter issue, volume controls, is a means to restrict supply, which drives up prices for consumers. Fortunately, there are few active volume controls. Point 105. Marketing orders and checkoff programs are some of the most egregious programs run by the USDA. They are, in effect, a tax a means to compel speech and government blessed cartels. Instead of getting private cooperation, they are tools for industry actors to work with government to force cooperation. The next administration should L. Reduce the number and scope of marketing orders and checkoff programs. The USDA should reject any new requests for marketing orders and checkoff programs to the extent authorized by law and eliminate existing programs when possible. While the programs work differently, there are often petition processes and other ways that make it difficult for affected parties to get rid of the marketing orders and checkoff programs 106 and the USDA itself may not even be required to honor requests to terminate a program. Point 107 The USDA should make the process easier. Further, the USDA should reject any effort to bring back volume controls to limit supplies of commodities. L. Work with Congress to eliminate marketing orders and checkoff programs. These programs should be eliminated, and if industry actors want to collaborate, they should do so through private means, not using the government to compel cooperation. L. Promote legislation that would require regular votes. There should be regular voting for parties subject to checkoff programs and marketing orders. For example, the voting should occur at least every five years, to determine whether a marketing order or checkoff program should continue. The USDA should be required to honor the results of such a vote. Through regular voting, parties can demonstrate their support for a marketing order or checkoff program and ensure that those administering them will be held accountable. 
focus on trade policy, not trade promotion. The USDA's Foreign Agricultural Service, FOS, covers numerous issues, including trade policy, which is a reference to removing trade barriers, among other things, to ensure an environment conducive to trade. Point 108 It also covers trade promotion. Point 109 This includes programs like the Market Access Program 110 that subsidizes trade associations, businesses, and other private entities to market and promote their products overseas. FOS should play a proactive and leading role to help open up markets for American farmers and ranchers. There are numerous barriers, such as sanitary and phytosanitary measures, blocking American agricultural products from gaining access to foreign markets. Point 111 However, FOS should not help businesses and industries promote their exports, something these businesses and industries can and should do on their own. The next administration should L. Push legislation to repeal export promotion programs. The USDA should work with Congress to repeal market development programs like the Market Access Program and similar programs. Remove obstacles for agricultural biotechnology. Innovation is critical to agricultural production and the ability to meet future food needs. The next administration should embrace innovation and technology, not hinder its use especially because of scare tactics that ignore sound science. One of the key innovations in agriculture is genetic engineering. According to the USDA, see currently, over 90% of U.S. corn, upland cotton and soybeans are produced using GE genetically. Engineered Varieties 112. Despite the importance of agricultural biotechnology, in 2016, Congress passed a federal mandate to label genetically engineered food. 113. This legislation was arguably just a means to try to provide a negative connotation to GE food. There are other challenges as well for agricultural biotechnology. For example, Mexico plans to ban the importation of U.S. genetically modified yellow corn. 114. The next administration should L. Counter scare tactics and remove obstacles. The USDA should strongly counter scare tactics regarding agricultural biotechnology and adopt policies to remove unnecessary barriers to approvals and the adoption of biotechnology. L. Repeal the federal labeling mandate. The USDA should work with Congress to repeal the federal labeling law, while maintaining federal preemption, and stress that voluntary labeling is allowed. L. Use all tools available to remove improper trade barriers against agricultural biotechnology. The USDA should work closely with the Office of the United States Trade Representative to remove improper barriers imposed by other countries to block U.S. agricultural goods. Reform Forest Service Wildfire Management The United States Forest Service is one of four federal government land management agencies that administer 606 million acres, or 95% of the 640 million acres of surface land area managed by the federal government. 115 Located within the USDA, the Forest Service manages the National Forest System, which is comprised of 193 million acres. 116 As explained by the USDA, the USDA Forest Service's mission is to sustain the health, diversity, and productivity of the nation's forests and grasslands to meet the needs of present and future generations. 117 the Forest Service should focus on proactive management of the forests and grasslands that does not depend heavily on burning. There should be resilient forests and grasslands in the wake of management actions. Wildfires have become a primary vegetation management regime for national forests and grasslands. 118 Recognizing the need for vegetation management, the Forest Service has adopted pyrosilviculture using unplanned fire 119 such as unplanned human caused fires, to otherwise accomplish vegetation management. 120 the Forest Service should instead be focusing on addressing the precipitous annual amassing of biomass in the national forests that drive the behavior of wildfires. By thinning trees, removing live fuels and deadwood, and taking other preventive steps, the Forest Service can help to minimize the consequences of wildfires. Increasing timber sales could also play an important role in the effort to change the behavior of wildfire because there would be less biomass. Timber sales and timber harvested in public forests dropped precipitously in the early 1990s and still remain very low. For example, in 1988, the volume of timber sold and harvested by volume was about 11 billion and 12.6 billion board feet, BBF, respectively. 121 in 2021, timber sold was 2.8 BBF and timber harvested was 2.4 BBF. In 2018, President Donald Trump issued Executive Order 13855 to, among other things, promote active management of forests and reduce wildfire risks. 122 The executive order stated, Active management of vegetation is needed to treat these dangerous conditions on federal lands but is often delayed due to challenges associated with regulatory analysis and current consultation requirements. 123 It further explained the need to reduce regulatory obstacles to fuel reduction in forests created by the National Environmental Policy Act and the Endangered Species Act. 124. The next administration should L. Champion executive action, consistent with law, and proactive legislation to reduce wildfires. This would involve embracing Executive Order 13855, building upon it, and working with lawmakers to promote active management of vegetation, 
reduce regulatory obstacles to reducing fuel buildup, and increase timber sales. Eliminate or reform the dietary guidelines. The USDA, in collaboration with HHS, publishes the dietary guidelines every five years. 125 for more than 40 years, the federal government has been releasing dietary guidelines 126 and during this time, there has been constant controversy due to questionable recommendations and claims regarding the politicization of the process. In the 2015 Dietary Guidelines process, the Influential Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee veered off mission and attempted to persuade the USDA and HHS to adopt nutritional advice that focused not just on human health, but the health of the planet. 127 issues such as climate change and sustainability infiltrated the process. Fortunately, the 2020 process did not get diverted in this manner. However, the dietary guidelines remain a potential tool to influence dietary choices to achieve objectives unrelated to the nutritional and dietary well-being of Americans. There is no shortage of private sector dietary advice for the public, and nutrition and dietary choices are best left to individuals to address their personal needs. This includes working with their own health professionals. As it is, there is constantly changing advice provided by the government, with insufficient qualifications on the advice, oversimplification to the point of miscommunicating important points, questionable use of science, and potential political influence. The dietary guidelines have a major impact because they not only can influence how private health providers offer nutritional advice, but they also inform federal programs. School meals are required to be consistent with the guidelines. 128. The next administration should L. Work with lawmakers to repeal the dietary guidelines. The USDA should help lead an effort to repeal the dietary guidelines. L. Minimally, the next administration should reform the dietary guidelines. The USDA, with HHS, should develop a more transparent process that properly considers the underlying science and does not overstate its findings. It should also ensure that the dietary guidelines focus on nutritional issues and do not veer off mission by focusing on unrelated issues, such as the environment, that have nothing to do with nutritional advice. In fact, if environmental concerns supersede or water down recommendations for human nutritional advice, the public would be receiving misleading health information. The USDA, working with lawmakers, should codify these reforms into law. Organizational issues. Based on the recommended reforms identified as ideal solutions, the USDA would look different in many respects. One of the biggest changes would be a USDA that is not focused on welfare, given that means-tested welfare programs would be moved to HHS. The Food and Nutrition Service that administers the food and nutrition programs would be eliminated. The Farm Service Agency, which administers many of the farm subsidy programs, would be significantly smaller in size if the ideal farm subsidy reforms were adopted. Most important, a conservative USDA as envisioned, would not be used as a governmental tool to transform the nation's food system, but instead would respect the importance of efficient agricultural production and ensure that the government does not hinder farmers and ranchers from producing an abundant supply of safe and affordable food. For a conservative USDA to become a reality, and for it to stay on course with the mission as outlined, the White House must strongly support these reforms and install strong USDA leaders. These individuals almost certainly will be faced with opposition from some in the agricultural community who would fight changing subsidies in any fashion, although many of the reforms would likely be embraced by those in agriculture. There would be strong opposition from environmental groups and others who want the federal government to transform American agriculture to meet their ideological objectives. Finally, there would be opposition from left-of-center groups who do not want to reform SNAP and would expand welfare and dependency such as through universal free school meals as opposed to reducing dependency. Reducing the scope of government and promoting individual freedom may not always be easy, but it is something that conservatives regularly should strive for. The listed reforms to the U.S. Department of Agriculture would help to accomplish these objectives and are well worth fighting for to achieve a freer and more prosperous nation. Conclusion This chapter started with a discussion of the incredible success of American farmers and American agriculture in general. This is how the chapter should close as well. Americans are blessed with an agricultural sector, and a food system in general, which are worthy of incredible respect. A conservative USDA should appreciate this while recognizing that its role is to serve the interests of all Americans not special interests. By being a champion of unleashing the potential of American agriculture, a conservative USDA would help to ensure a future with an abundant supply of safe and affordable food for individuals and families in the United States and across the globe. Authors note, the author would like to thank all the contributors for their assistance, expertise, and insight into the development of this chapter. In addition, special thanks are due to Rachel Wilfong, who was instrumental in getting the chapter ready for submission. End notes. 1 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Fiscal Year 2023 Budget Summary, P.1, HTTPS slash slash www.usda.gov slash site slash default slash files slash documents slash 2023 USDA Budget Summary .pdf, accessed December 14, 2022. 2C, for example, U.S. Department of Agriculture, 
Transforming the U.S. Food System, HTTPS slash slash www.usda.gov slash FST, accessed December 14, 2022. 3. U.S. Department of Agriculture, Fiscal Year 2023 Budget Summary, P.1. 4. U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA celebrates 150 years, HTTPS slash slash www.usda.gov slash our agency slash about USDA slash history, accessed December 16, 2022. 5. The law stated, T here is hereby established at the seat of government of the United States a Department of Agriculture, the general designs and duties of which shall be to acquire and to diffuse among the people of the United States useful information on subjects connected with agriculture in the most general and comprehensive sense of that word, and to procure, propagate, and distribute among the people new and valuable seeds and plants. Gladys L. Baker ETAL, Century of Service, the first 100 years of the United States Department of Agriculture, Washington, D.C., U.S. Government Printing Office, 1963, P13. HTTPS slash slash babel dot half a trust dot org slash CGI slash PT ID equals UC one dot B four two five four zero nine eight and view equals one up and sec equals thirty three access December sixteenth, twenty twenty two. Six US Department of Agriculture, Fiscal Year twenty twenty three budget summary, P two. Seven IBID, P two. Eight US Department of Agriculture, Strategic Plan, Fiscal Years twenty twenty two twenty twenty six, P three. HTTPS slash slash www.usda.gov slash site slash default slash file slash documents slash USDA FI 2022 2026 strategic plan. PDF, accessed December 14, 2022. 9 News Release USDA announces framework for shoring up the food supply chain and transforming the food system to be fairer, more competitive, more resilient. U.S. Department of Agriculture, June 1, 2022. HTTPS slash slash www.usda.gov slash media slash press releases slash 2022 slash 06 slash 01 slash USDA announces framework shoring food supply chain and transforming, access December 14, 2022. 10 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Transforming the U.S. Food System. 11 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Strategic Plan, Fiscal Years 2022-2026, Pages 1-2. 12 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Background on the U.S. Approach to the 2021 UN Food System Summit, August 4, 2021, https slash slash www.usda.gov slash site slash default slash file slash documents slash background on U.S. Approach 2021 UN Food System Summit. PDF, access December 14, 2022. 13 U.S. Department of Agriculture, UN Food System Summit, https slash slash www.usda.gov slash o slash sustainability slash unsummit. Access December 14, 2022. 14 Mark Bittman ETAL, How a National Food Policy Could Save Millions of American Lives, The Washington Post, November 7, 2014, https slash slash www.washingtonpost.com slash opinions slash how a national food policy could save millions of American lives slash 2014 slash 11 slash 07 slash 89 C55 E16637 F11 E4836C83 BC4 F26EB67 underscore story dot HTML. Access December 14, 2022, Darren Baxt and Gabriella Beaumont-Smith, No, We Don't Need to Transform the American Food System, The Daily Signal, February 26, 2021, HTTPS slash slash www.dailysignal.com slash 2021 slash 02 slash 26 slash No We Don't Need to Transform the American Food System slash, Access December 14, 2022, and Darren Baxt, Biden's Food Conference Should Put People First, Not Environmental Extremism, the Daily Signal, September 22, 2022, https slash slash www.dailysignal.com slash 2022 slash 09 slash 22 slash Biden's Food Conference Should Put People First Not Environmental Extremism slash, accessed December 14, 2022. 15 News Release, USDA to invest up to $300 million in new organic transition initiative, U.S. Department of Agriculture, August 22, 2022. HTTPS slash slash www.usda.gov slash media slash press releases slash 2022 slash 08 slash 22 slash USDA invest 300 million new organic transition initiative, access December 14, 2022. 16 Gary Bays, Sri Lanka's Green New Deal was a disaster, Farm Futures, November 14, 2022. HTTPS slash slash www.farmprogress.com slash commentary slash Sri Lanka's Green New Deal was disaster. Access December 16, 2022. 17C, for example, Catherine Green ETAL, Growing Organic Demand Provides High Value Opportunities for Many Types of Producers, Economic Research Service, U.S. Department of Agriculture, February 6, 2017, 
https slash slash www.ers.usda.gov slash amberwave slash 2017 slash january february slash growing organic demand provides high value opportunities for many types of producers slash number colon text equals ers percent 20 research percent 20 shows percent 20 that percent 20 many flavor percent 20 desired percent 20 by percent 20 the percent 20 consumer access december 14th 2022 and andrea carlson investigating retail price premiums for organic foods economic research service U.S. Department of Agriculture, May 24, 2016, https slash slash www.ers.usda.gov slash amberwave slash 2016 slash may slash investigating retail price premiums for organic food slash access December 16, 2022. Further, there are many myths, such as those regarding the alleged health benefit of organic food. 1. Meta study found that T. He published literature lacks strong evidence that organic foods are significantly more nutritious than conventional foods. Crystal Smith Spangler ETAL, are organic foods safer or healthier than conventional alternatives? Annals of Internal Medicine, Volume 157, Number 5, September 4, 2012, pages 348 366, https slash slash www.ipjournals.org slash doi slash epf slash 10.7326 slash 0003 4819 157 5-201209040-00007. Access December 16, 2022. 18. Steve Savage, USDA data confirm organic yields significantly lower than with conventional farming, Genetic Literacy Project, February 16, 2018. HTTPS slash slash genetic literacy project dot org slash 2018 slash 02 slash 16 slash USDA data confirm organic yields dramatically lower conventional farming slash. Access December 16, 2022. 19. C, for example, US Department of Agriculture, notice. Climate Smart Agriculture and Forestry Partnership Program, Request for Comments, USDA 2021-0010, October 21, 2021, https www slash document slash USDA 2021-0010-0001, Access December 16, 2022. 20 Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, Public Law 117-169. 21 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Economic Research Service, Productivity Growth in U.S. Agriculture, 1948-2019, HTTPS slash slash www.ers.usda.gov slash data products slash agricultural productivity in the U.S. slash productivity growth in U.S. Agriculture 1948-2019 slash, access December 14, 2022. 22 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Economic Research Service. Total food budget share increased from 9.4% of disposable income to 10.3% in 2021, July 15, 2022, https slash slash www.ers.usda.gov slash data products slash chart gallery slash gallery slash chart detail slash chart ID equals 76967, access December 14, 2022. 23 U.S. Department of Labor, Bureau of Labor Statistics, Quintiles of Income Before Taxes, Annual Expenditure Means, Shares, and standard errors, and coefficients of variation, consumer expenditure surveys, 2021, table 1101, https slash slash www.bls.gov slash sex slash table slash calendar year slash mean item share average standard error slash cu income quintiles before taxes 2021.pdf, access December 16, 2022, and Darren Baxt and Patrick Durrell, big government policies that hurt the poor and how to address them, heritage. Foundation Special Report No. 176, April 5, 2017, p7, https slash slash www.heritage.org slash site slash default slash file slash 2017-04 slash sr176.pdf. 24 Darren Baxt and Joshua Sewell, Congress should stop abrogating its spending power and reign in the USDA slush fund, Heritage Foundation Issue Brief No. 6052, February 19, 2021, p2. HTTPS slash slash www.heritage.org slash budget and spending slash report slash Congress should stop abrogating its spending power and reign the USDA. 25 Commodity Credit Corporation Charter Act of 1948, Public Law 8806. 26 Baxt and Sewell, Congress should stop abrogating its spending power. 27 Ibid, P3. 28 Darren Baxt, comment from Baxt, Darren on notice, Climate Smart Agriculture and Forestry Partnership Program, request for comments. USDA 2021-0010, October 21, 2021, November 1, 2021, 
https slash slash www.regulations.gov slash document slash usda 2021-0010-0001 slash comment, filter equals baxed, accessed December 16, 2022. 29 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Notice, Climate Smart Agriculture and Forestry Partnership Program. 30 Megan Stubbs, The Commodity Credit Corporation, CCC, Congressional Research Service Report for Congress, Updated January 14, 2021. HTTPS slash slash chrisreports.congress.gov slash product slash pdf slash r slash r44606, accessed December 16, 2022. 31 overall, 34% of all farms reported receiving some type of government payment in 2021, and overall, 14% of U.S. farms participated in federal crop insurance programs. Christine Witt, Noah Miller, and Ryan Olver, America's Farms and Ranches at a Glance, 2022 edition, U.S. Department of Agriculture. Economic Research Service, pages 24 and 26, https slash slash www.ers.usda.gov slash webdocs slash publications slash 105388 slash eib 247.pdf, v equals 527.4, accessed March 18, 2023. This data, which apparently does not cover crop insurance, included payments beyond just commodity payments, such as conservation payments. 32 Randy Schnepf Farm Safety Net Payments Under the 2014 Farm Bill, Comparison by Program Crop, Congressional Research Service Report for Congress, August 11, 2017, https slash slash fos.org slash sgp slash crs slash miscellaneous slash r44914.pdf, accessed December 14, 2022. 33 All the livestock and specialty crop producers do receive some subsidies, former American Farm Bureau Federation President Bob Stallman captured the subsidy issue well. He dismissed D outright the claim that farmers couldn't survive without subsidy money. Why does the livestock industry survive without subsidies, he asked Ed. Why does the specialty crop fruit and vegetable industry survive? Tamar Haspel, why do taxpayers subsidize rich farmers? The Washington Post, March 15, 2018, https slash slash www.washingtonpost.com slash lifestyle slash food slash why do taxpayers subsidize rich farmers slash 2018 slash 03 slash 15 slash 508990627b6118b79df3d931db7f68 underscore story dot html, accessed March 18, 2023. 34 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Farm Service Agency, ARC slash PLC Program. HTTPS slash slash www.fsa.usda.gov slash programs and services slash arcplic underscore program slash index, access December 16, 2022. 35 IBID. 36 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Economic Research Service, Crop Insurance at a Glance, May 31, 2022. HTTPS slash slash www.ers.usda.gov slash topics slash farm practices management slash risk management slash crop insurance at a glance slash. Accessed December 16, 2022. 37 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Agriculture Risk Coverage, ALC, and Price Loss Coverage, PLC, Farm Service Agency Fact Sheet, August 2019, HTTPS slash slash www.fsa.usda.gov slash assets slash USDA FSA public slash USDA files slash fact sheets slash 2019 slash arc PLC underscore overview underscore fact underscore sheet dog underscore 2019 PDF. Access December 16, 2022. 38C, for example, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Farm Service Agency, Agriculture Risk Coverage and Price Loss Coverage Handbook, last amended October 5, 2020. HTTPS slash slash www.fsa.usda.gov slash internet slash fsa underscore file slash one arcbook underscore r01 underscore a 10. PDF, accessed March 18, 2023. Mesbah Matamid. Federal Commodity Programs Price Loss Coverage and Agriculture Risk Coverage Address Price Yield Risks Faced by Producers, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Economic Research Service, August 6, 2018, HTTPS slash slash www.ers.usda.gov slash Amber Waves slash 2018 slash August slash Federal Commodity Programs Price Loss Coverage and Agriculture Risk Coverage Address Price and Yield Risks Faced by Producers slash Accessed March 18, 2023, and Taxpayers for Common Sense, Shallow Loss Agriculture Programs 101, HTTPS slash slash www.taxpayer.net slash agriculture slash shallow loss agriculture programs 101 slash, accessed March 18, 2023. 39 IBID. 40 Stephanie Roche, Federal Crop Insurance, A Primer, Congressional Research Service Report for Congress, February 18, 2021, P1, 
https slash slash chrisreports.congress.gov slash product slash pdf slash r slash r46686, December 14, 2021. 41 Congressional Budget Office, Options for Reducing the Deficit, 2023-2032, Volume 2, Smaller Reductions, December 2022, P6, https slash slash www.cbo.gov slash system slash files slash 2022-12 slash 58163 Budget Options Small Effects PDF, Access December 14, 2022. 42 Roche, Federal Crop Insurance, A Primer, P17. 43 Farm Bill Primer, Sugar Program, Congressional Research Service in Focus, updated May 15, 2018, https slash slash www.evricrisreport.com slash files slash 20180515 underscore if 10689 underscore 42900 E56B67F5CFA1740953 ad 9ACB54561D3DB.pdf, access December 16, 2022. 44C, for example, Agrilitika. Economic Effects of the Sugar Program Since the 2008 Farm Bill and Policy Implications for the 2013 Farm Bill, June 3, 2013, P1, https slash slash fairsugarpolicy.org slash wordpress slash wp content slash upload slash 2018 slash 03 slash agrolytica economic effects paper June 2013. PDF, access December 16, 2022. 45 U.S. Department of Labor, Quintiles of Income Before Taxes, and Baxt and Tyrell. Big Government Policies That Hurt the Poor and How to Address Them. 46 Congressional Budget Office, Options for Reducing the Deficit, 2023-2032, P3. See also Congressional Budget Office, Reduce Subsidies in the Crop Insurance Program, in Congressional Budget Office, Options for Reducing the Deficit, 2021-2030, December 9, 2020. HTTPS slash slash www.cbo.gov slash budget options slash 56815, access December 14, 2022. 47 Congressional Budget Office, Options for Reducing the Deficit, 2023-2032, P6. 48 Reduce Premium Subsidies in the Federal Crop Insurance Program, Budget Blueprint for Fiscal Year 2023, HTTPS slash slash www.heritage.org slash budget slash pages slash recommendations slash 2.350.171.html. 49 Congressional Budget Office, Reduce Subsidies in the Crop Insurance Program. 50 IBID. 51 Congressional Budget Office, Options for Reducing the Deficit, 2023-2032, P6. 52 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Service, Center for Nutrition Policy and Promotion, CNPP, HTTPS slash slash www.fns.usda.gov slash CNPP, access December 16, 2022, and U.S. Department of Agriculture, about CNPP, Food and Nutrition Service. HTTPS slash slash www.fns.usda.gov slash about CNPP, access December 16, 2022. 53 Dietary Guidelines for Americans, Purpose of the Dietary Guidelines, HTTPS slash slash www.dietaryguidelines.gov slash about dietary guidelines slash purpose dietary guidelines, access December 16, 2022. 54 Robert Rector and VJ Maynon, Understanding the Hidden $1.1 Trillion Welfare System and How to Reform It. Heritage Foundation Backgrounder No. 3294, April 5, 2018, https slash slash www.heritage.org slash welfare slash report slash understanding the hidden 11 trillion welfare system and how reform it. 55 U.S. Department of Agriculture, SNAP Data Tables, Food and Nutrition Service, December 9, 2022, https slash slash www.fns.usda.gov slash pd slash supplemental nutrition assistance program SNAP. Access December 16, 2022. 56 IBID. 57 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Service, SNAP Work Requirements, May 2019, https slash slash www.fns.usda.gov slash SNAP slash work requirements number colon text equals work percent 20 at percent 20 least percent 20 80 percent 20 hours least percent 20 80 percent 20 hours percent 20 a percent 20 month, access December 16, 2022. 587 U.S. Code 2015, HTTPS slash slash www.law.cornell.edu slash us code slash text slash 7 slash 2015, access December 16, 2022. 59 IBID. 67 U.S. Code 2015, 0, 4. The USDA has approved nearly all waivers under the lack of sufficient jobs option. 61 Federal Register, Volume 84, Number 234, December 5, 2019. P66782, 
https slash slash www.govinfo.gov slash content slash package slash fr 2019-12-05 slash pdf slash 2019-26044.pdf access december 14th 2022 62 ibid p66795 63 ibid pages 66807 66810 64 district of columbia etalv us department of agriculture 496 F sub 3D 213, 2020, https slash slash oag.dc.gov slash site slash default slash file slash 2020 10 slash snap about opinion dot pdf, access December 16th, 2022. 65 Ibid. On December 16th, 2020, the Trump administration appealed the district court decision. See, for example, news release Fudge Slams administration for appealing a bot ruling, House Committee on Agriculture. December 16, 2020, https slash slash agriculture.house.gov slash news slash document single dot aspx, document ID equals 2069, access December 16, 2022. 66 News Release, Statement by Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack on D.C. Circuit Court's decision regarding ABAWD's rule, U.S. Department of Agriculture, March 24, 2021. HTTPS slash slash www.usda.gov slash media slash press releases slash 2021 slash 03 slash 24 slash statement agriculture secretary Tom Vilsack DC Circuit Courts, accessed December 16, 2022. 67 U.S. Department of Agriculture, SNAP Employment and Training Screening and Referral Guidance, July 13, 2022. HTTPS slash slash www.fns.usda.gov slash SNAP slash ET Screening and Referral Guidance. Access December 16, 2022. 68 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Service, Regulatory Reform at a Glance, Proposed Rule, Revision of SNAP Categorical Eligibility, July 2019, HTTPS slash slash www.usda.gov slash site slash default slash file slash documents slash BBCE underscore fact underscore sheet underscore percent 28 final percent 29 underscore 72219PR.pdf, Access December 14, 2022. 69.7 Code of Federal Regulations 273.8, 1978, https slash slash www.law.cornell.edu slash cfr slash text slash 7 slash 273.8, access December 16, 2022. 70 Christina Rasmussen, How Millionaires Collect Food Stamps, Wall Street Journal, January 15, 2018. HTTPS slash slash www.wsj.com slash article slash how millionaires collect food stamps 15160440026, access December 14, 2022. 71 Federal Register, Volume 84, Number 142, July 24, 2019, pages 35,500 and 70, 55,581. HTTPS slash slash www.federalregister.gov slash documents slash 2019 slash 07 slash 24 slash 2019 dash 15670 slash revision of categorical eligibility in the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program SNAP, access December 14, 2022. 72 News Release, USDA Modernizes the Thrifty Food Plan, Updates SNAP Benefits, U.S. Department of Agriculture, August 16, 2021. HTTPS slash slash www.usda.gov slash media slash press releases slash 2021 slash 08 slash 16 slash USDA modernizes thrifty food plan updates snap, access December 14, 2022. 73 Philip L. Swagel, Director, Congressional Budget Office, Letter to Congressman Jason Smith, June 23, 2022, P2. HTTPS slash slash www.cbo.gov slash system slash files slash 2022 06 slash 58231smith.pdf, access December 14, 2022. 74 Congressional Budget Office, H.R2, as passed by the House of Representatives and as passed by the Senate, July 24, 2018. HTTPS slash slash www.cbo.gov slash publication slash 54284, access December 16, 2022. 75 News Release, Republican AG Committee Leadership Urge GA Review of USDA Thrifty Food Plan Scheme, U.S. House Committee on Agriculture, August 13, 2021, HTTPS slash slash Republicans Agriculture dot house dot gov slash news slash document single dot ASPX, document ID equals 7013, access December 14, 2022. 76 The 2014 Farm Bill, Changing the Tradition of LIHEAP Receipt in the Calculation of SNAP Benefits, Updated February 12, 2014. Congressional Research Service Report for Congress R42591, 
https slash slash chris reports dot congress dot gov slash product slash pdf slash r slash r four two five nine one slash twenty four accessed march eighteenth twenty twenty three seventy seven federal register volume eighty four number one hundred and ninety two october third two thousand and nineteen pages fifty two thousand eight hundred and nine fifty two thousand eight hundred and fifteen https slash slash www dot govinfo dot gov slash content slash package slash fr twenty nineteen dash ten dash zero three slash pdf slash twenty nineteen dash two one two eight seven dot pdf access december sixteenth twenty twenty two seventy eight us department of agriculture special supplemental nutrition program for women infants and children wic data series two thousand and eighteen to twenty twenty two https slash slash www fns usda gov slash pd slash wic program access december 14th 2022 79 us department of agriculture food and nutrition service wic data tables december 9th 2022 https slash slash www fns usda gov slash pd slash wic program access december 16th 2022 80 U.S. Food and Drug Administration, Regulations and Information on the Manufacture and Distribution of Infant Formula, May 16, 2022, https slash slash www.fda.gov slash food slash infant formula guidance documents regulatory information slash regulations and information manufacture and distribution infant formula, accessed December 14, 2022. 81 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Service, History of the National School Lunch Program, January 17, 2008. HTTPS slash slash www .fns .usda .gov slash nslp slash program history, access December 14, 2022. 82 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Service, School Breakfast Program History, July 24, 2013, HTTPS slash slash www .fns .usda .gov slash sbp slash program history, access December 14, 2022, and U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Service, History of the National School Lunch Program. 83 Crystal Fitzsimmons, Free School Meals for All is the Key to Supporting Education and Health Outcomes, Journal of Policy Analysis and Management, Vol. 41, No. 1, 2022, pages 358 364, https slash slash econpapers.repec.org slash article slash olipamp slash v underscore 3a41 underscore 3i underscore 3a2022 underscore 3ai underscore 3a1 underscore 3ap underscore 3a358364. HDM. Access December 14, 2022. 84 Jonathan Butcher and Vijay Menon, Returning to the Intent of Government School Meals, Helping Students in Need, Heritage Foundation Backgrounder No. 3399, March 22, 2019, https slash slash www.heritage.org slash site slash default slash file slash 2019-03 slash bg3399 pdf. 85 Darren Baxt and Jonathan Butcher, A Critical Fix to the Federal Overreach on School Meals, Heritage Foundation Issue Brief No. 4976, July 11, 2019, https slash slash www.heritage.org slash hunger and food program slash report slash critical fix the federal overreach school meals. 86 IBID, and U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Service, Community Eligibility Provision, April 19, 2019. HTTPS slash slash www.fns.usda.gov slash CN slash community eligibility provision, access December 16, 2022. 87C Payment Accuracy, HTTPS slash slash www.paymentaccuracy.gov slash, access December 16, 2022. 88 Payment Accuracy, Payment Integrity Scorecard, HTTPS slash slash www.cfo.gov slash WP content slash upload slash 2022 slash Q3 slash FNS percent 20 national percent 20 school percent 20 lunch percent 20 program percent 20 NSLP percent 20 payments percent 20 integrity percent 20 scorecard percent 25 percent 202022 percent 20 Q3 dot PDF access December 14th 2022 89 US Government Accountability Office School Meals Programs USDA has reported taking some steps to reduce improper payments but should comprehensively assess fraud risks, Dow 19389, May 21, 2022, https slash slash www.gov.gov slash products slash Gow 19-389, access December 14, 2022. 90 Payment Accuracy, Payment Integrity Scorecard. 91 White House, Fact Sheet, The American Families Plan, April 28, 2021. 
https slash slash www.whitehouse.gov slash briefing room slash statements releases slash 2021 slash 04 slash 28 slash fact sheet the American Families Plan slash access December 14, 2022. 92 Universal School Meals Program Act of 2021, S 1530, 117 CONG, First Session, HTTPS slash slash www.congress.gov slash bill slash 117th Congress slash Senate bill slash 1530, accessed December 14, 2022. 93 C, for example, U.S. Department of Agriculture, find meals for kids when schools are closed, Food and Nutrition Service, September 22, 2022. HTTPS slash slash www.fns.usda.gov slash meals for kids, access December 16, 2022, and U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Service, Seamless Summer and Other Options for School, July 16, 2013, HTTPS slash slash www.fns.usda.gov slash sfsp slash Seamless Summer and Other Options Schools, access December 16, 2022. 94 Tom Driscoll, from the field. Farmers are the original conservationists, National Farmers Union, August 30, 2017, https slash slash info.org slash 2017 slash 08 slash 30 slash from the field farmers are the original conservationists slash, accessed December 16, 2022. 95 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Farm Service Agency, Conservation Programs, https slash slash www.fsa.usda.gov slash programs and services slash conservation programs slash index, Access December 16, 2022, and U.S. Department of Agriculture, Natural Resources Conservation Service, Programs and Initiatives, https slash slash www.nrcs.usda.gov slash programs initiatives, access December 16, 2022. 96 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Farm Service Agency, Conservation Reserve Program, about the Conservation Reserve Program, CRP. HTTPS slash slash www.fsa.usda.gov slash programs and services slash conservation program slash conservation reserve program slash access December 16, 2022. 97 American Bakers Association ETAL, Letter to U.S. Department of Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack, March 23, 2022. HTTPS slash slash www.dropbox.com slash s slash yfyv04 ilcom 11 zd slash usda percent 20 letter percent 20 to percent 20 secretary percent 20 vilsack percent 20 on percent 20 tools percent 20 to percent 20 address percent 20 global percent 20 commodity percent 20 supply percent 20 challenges percent 203.23.22 underscore dot pdf dl equals zero access december 15, 2022 it is also necessary to increase food production to mitigate high food inflation Approximately 25% of idled land is considered prime farmland. Therefore, one quarter of idled land is merely idling, not producing food and this does not include other land that may viably be used for food production. The Conservation Reserve Program should be eliminated. There are also two issues connected to property rights and fairness that should be addressed, challenging NRCS determinations and problems with USDA easements. To be eligible for many USDA programs, farmers must comply with certain conservation provisions enforced by NRCS. Conservation compliance of wetlands and highly erodible lands consist of federal restrictions that prevent farmers from using parts of their property. If farmers plant crops or modify the areas federal officials deem protected, farmers can lose all access to USDA programs and support. For farmers, there are real, practical concerns to challenging NRCS determinations, including the time and costs of challenging the federal bureaucracy. NRCS is empowered to declare areas wetlands and highly erodible areas, which are therefore off-limits for farming. If these wetland or erodible declared areas are used in a manner deemed unacceptable by federal officials, NRCS may revoke access to federal resources and subsidies by making technical determinations that carry potential penalties. There must be a fair and reasonable process for farmers to challenge such actions. See Darren Baxt, food price inflation continues to worsen. Here's what should be done about it, The Daily Signal, April 25, 2022 https slash slash www.dailysignal.com slash 2022 slash 04 slash 25 slash food price inflation continuing to worsen hey race what should be done about it slash access december 15th 2022 american bakers association et.al letter to vilsack u.s department of agriculture natural resources conservation service conservation compliance appeals process https slash slash www.nrcs.usda.gov slash getting assistance slash compliance slash conservation compliance appeals process, accessed. December 15, 2022, and Chris Bennett, Regulatory Hell, Farmer and Veteran Wins 10-Year Wetlands Fight with Government, AG Webb, August 30, 2021, 
https slash slash www.agweb.com slash news slash crops slash crop production slash regulatory hell farmer and veteran wins 10 year wetlands fight, accessed December 15, 2022. 98 Fortunately, there are already resources available to help states establish their own wetlands conservation programs. One particular example, the American Legislative Exchange Council's Wetlands Mapping and Protection Act model policy, is available for states to define the procedures, guidelines, and administration of wetlands programs. American Legislative Exchange Council, Wetlands Mapping and Protection Act, November 16, 2017, https slash slash alec.org slash model policy slash wetlands mapping and protection act slash, accessed December 16, 2022. The new administration should focus on best practices instead of imposing prescriptive federal practices. It should support the policies contained within the NRCS Wetland Compliance and Appeals Reform Act and modify NRCS compliance rules to protect farmers and ranchers by adding protections against regulatory overreach such as banning the practice of re-engaging farmers in new technical determinations appeals processes for the same areas of their farms. See NRCS Wetland Compliance and Appeals Reform Act, S4931-117 CONG, Second Session, https slash slash www.congress.gov slash bill slash 117th congress slash senate bill slash 4931 s equals 1 and r equals 8 access december 15 2022 99 ibid 100 c for example darren baxt and jeremy dalrymple reducing federal barriers for the sale of meat heritage foundation issue brief number 5078 june 1 2020 https slash slash www.heritage.org slash agriculture slash report slash reducing federal barriers the sale meet, and U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food Safety and Inspection Service, State Inspection Programs, updated January 12, 2023, https slash slash www.fsis.usda.gov slash inspection slash state inspection programs, access December 15, 2022. 101 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food Safety and Inspection Service, Cooperative Interstate Shipping Program, September 7, 2022, https slash slash www.fsis.usda.gov slash inspection slash state inspection program slash cooperative interstate shipping program, access December 15, 2022. 102 U.S. Department of Agriculture, State Inspection Programs. 103 The Senate Bill Removes Obstacles for Both Meat and Poultry. The House version does not appear to cover poultry. New Markets for State Inspected Meat and Poultry Act of 2021. S 107, 117 CONG, First Session, HTTPS slash slash www.congress.gov slash bill slash 117th Congress slash Senate bill slash 107 number colon text equals this percent 20 bill percent 20 allows percent 20 meet percent 20 and be percent 20 sold percent 20 in percent 20 interstate percent 20 commerce, access December 15, 2022, and expanding markets for state inspected meat processors Act of 2021, HR 1998, 117th CONG, First session, https slash slash www.congress.gov slash bill slash 117th congress slash house bill slash 1998, access December 15, 2022. 104 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Agricultural Marketing Service, Specialty Crops Marketing Orders and Agreements, https slash slash www.ams.usda.gov slash rules regulations slash MOA slash FV, access December 15, 2022. 105C. For example, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Agricultural Marketing Service, Commodities Covered by Marketing Orders, HTTPS slash slash www.ams.usda.gov slash rules regulations slash MOA slash commodities, accessed March 18, 2023, and Elaine Allen and Darren Baxt, How the Government is Mandating Food Waste, August 19, 2016. HTTPS slash slash www.dailysignal.com slash 2016 slash 08 slash 19 slash how the government is mandating food waste slash, accessed March 18, 2023. 106 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Agricultural Marketing Service, Frequently Asked Questions Regarding the Beef Checkoff Program Petition Process, HTTPS slash slash www.ams.usda.gov slash rules regulations slash research promotion slash beef slash petition, accessed December 16, 2022. Beef Producers, Do You Want to Vote on the Checkoff? Beef Magazine, July 28, 2020, HTTPS slash slash www.beefmagazine.com slash marketing slash beef producers do you want vote checkoff, accessed December 16, 2022, and Steve White, Group Seeking Beef Checkoff Referendum Asks for Access to Producer Database, Nebraska TV, May 4, 2021. HTTPS slash slash Nebraska TV slash news slash NTVS grow slash group seeking beef checkoff referendum asks for access to producer database, 
accessed December 16, 2022. As reported, there has not been a referendum of the mandatory national beef checkoff program in 35 years. 107 C, for example, Federal Register, Volume 86, Number 213, November 8, 2021, P61718, HTTPS slash slash www.govinfo.gov slash content slash package slash FR 2021-11-08 slash PDF slash 2021-24301.pdf, accessed December 16, 2022. 108 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Foreign Agricultural Service, Topics, HTTPS slash slash www.fos.usda.gov slash topics, accessed December 15, 2022. 109 IBID. 110 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Foreign Agricultural Service, Market Access Program, MAP, HTTPS slash slash www.fos.usda.gov slash program slash market access program MAP, accessed December 16, 2022. 111 to learn about trade barriers for food and agricultural products, see, for example, news release, USTR releases 2022 National Trade Estimate Report on Foreign Trade Barriers, Office of the U.S. Trade Representative. March 31, 2022, https slash 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 about us slash policy offices slash press office slash press releases slash 2022 slash March slash Uster releases 2022 National Trade Estimate Report Foreign Trade Barriers, accessed December 16, 2022. 112 U.S. Department of Agriculture, Economic Research Service, Recent Trends in GE Adoption, September 14, 2022. HTTPS slash slash www.ers.usda.gov slash data products slash adoption of genetically engineered crops in the U.S. slash recent trends in GE adoption slash, accessed December 15, 2022. 113 National Bioengineered Food Disclosure Standard, Public Law 114-216. 114 NOI Mahoney, Trade Dispute Arising Over Mexico's Plan to Block Imports of Genetically Modified Corn, Freight Waves, November 22, 2022. HTTPS slash slash www.freightwaves.com slash news slash trade dispute arising over Mexico's plan to block imports of GM corn, accessed December 15, 2022, and news release, Grassley, Ernst, urge USTR to intervene in Mexico's ban on American corn, Office of Chuck Grassley, November 14, 2022, HTTPS slash slash www.grassley.senate.gov slash news slash news releases slash Grassley Ernst urge Ester to intervene in Mexico's ban on American corn. Accessed December 15, 2022. 115 The Federal Land Management Agencies, Congressional Research Service in Focus, updated February 16, 2021, https slash slash sgp.fos.org slash crs slash miscellaneous slash if 10585.pdf, accessed December 16, 2022. 116 IBID. 117 U.S. Department of Agriculture, U.S. Forest Service, Fiscal Year 2023, Budget Justification. March 2022, P1, https slash 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 site slash default slash file slash documents slash 32023fs.pdf, access December 16, 2022. 118 Forests and Rangelands, the National Strategy, the final phase in the development of the National Cohesive Wildland Fire Management Strategy, April 2014. HTTPS slash slash www.forestsandrangelands.gov slash documents slash strategy slash strategy slash xfacethia national strategy april 2014.pdf, accessed December 16, 2022. 119 U.S. Department of Agriculture, U.S. Forest Service, Unplanned Fires, HTTPS slash slash www.fs.usda.gov slash detail slash inyo slash land management slash resource management slash CID equals stel paired 3804071. Accessed December 16, 2022. 120 C, for example, Sherry Devlin, A Conversation with Jim Hubbard, Unplanned Wildfires Rule West's Forests, Tree Source, March 28, 2017, https slash slash treesource.org slash news slash land slash Jim Hubbard Forest Service Wildfires slash, accessed December 16, 2022. 121 U.S. Department of Agriculture, U.S. Forest Service, FI 1905-2021 National Summary Cut and Sold Data Graphs, HTTPS slash slash www.fs.usda.gov slash forest management slash documents slash sold harvest slash documents slash 1905-2021 underscore natl underscore summary underscore graph underscore warvestickers.pdf, accessed December 16, 2022, and U.S. Department of Agriculture, U.S. Forest Service, Forest Products Cut and Sold from the National Forests and Grasslands. 
https slash slash www.fs.usda.gov slash forest management slash products slash cut sold slash index dot shtml access december 16th 2022 122 donald j trump promoting active management of america's forests rangelands and other federal lands to improve conditions and reduce wildfire risk executive order 13855 december 21st 2018 https slash slash www.govinfo.gov slash content slash package slash dcpd 20180866 slash pdf slash dcpd 20180866.pdf access december 16th 2022 123 ibid 124 ibid 125 dietary guidelines for americans https slash slash www.dietaryguidelines.gov slash access december 16th 2022 126 Dietary Guidelines for Americans, History of the Dietary Guidelines, https slash slash www.dietaryguidelines.gov slash about dietary guidelines slash history dietary guidelines, access December 16, 2022. 127 Darren Baxt, Extreme Environmental Agenda Hijacks Dietary Guidelines, Comment to the Advisory Committee, The Daily Signal, July 17, 2014. HTTPS slash slash www.dailysignal.com slash 2014 slash 07 slash 17 slash extreme environmental agenda hijacks dietary guidelines comment advisory committee slash access December 16th, 2022. 128 Healthy, Hunger Free Kids Act of 2010, S3307, 111th CONG, Second Session, HTTPS slash slash www.congress.gov slash bill slash 111th congress slash senate bill slash 3307 slash text, access December 16th, 2022, and dietary guidelines for Americans, current dietary guidelines, HTTPS slash slash www.dietaryguidelines.gov slash USDA HHS development dietary guidelines, access December 16th, 2022.